Hey guys, Jim here again with just a uh, quick little, I don't know, I guess kind of an overview of what's become a uh, pretty collectible little series from Microtech, the uh, the Zombie Tech series. These have uh, kind of become all the rage right now for, you know, again, you know, guys that are kind of geeky over their knives and geeky over, you know, TV, movies, whatever, and you're into the whole zombie thing. Is it a little bit hokey? Sure, perhaps. I prefer the term campy. Um, it's, it's a campy thing. <clears throat> but you're actually buying, you know, some really, really serious knives here. Now, currently, there are only two knives that Microtech is offering in this Zombie Tech series. The first that came out in 2012 was this guy here. This is the uh, automatic out the front Ultra Tech, kind of their, uh, their medium size everyday carry version of their out the front automatic and you have a several different blade styles that you can choose from I went for the Tanto blade I like this profile um, they had the new bayonet blade that they were offering you can get the double edge blade you can get serrated not serrated so on and so forth but they offer two color choices in the blades and the hardware you can either do the black like I did here or you can get into the bead blasted finish which I chose for this one now this is the SOCOM Delta. I've been wanting to get a SOCOM Delta for a while. SOCOM Delta did just uh, receive the top honors for 2012 American Made Knife of the Year. And that was in the standard version, not in the Zombie Tech. It was in the, uh, the Black G10 and the regular blade. <clears throat> but now that I finally got my hands on one, I'm actually pretty excited. This is, this is one heck of a, uh, a slick, slick knife. We'll go over that in a little more detail in a bit. So, you know, the whole thing here is doing the whole zombie green thing. And each individual knife is going to be individually hand-painted for the blood spatter pattern that you see on the knives. I've seen some that had hardly any blood whatsoever on them. I've seen some that were really thick and heavy and caked on and maybe a little bit overly done. And what you need to do is find a dealer that's actually representing the actual picture of the knife that you'd be buying. When you do that, you get to pick your own spatter pattern. So when I shopped for this, at that time, more than a dozen different dealers had the Ultratech Zombie Techs in stock, and I just went from website to website till I found the one that I wanted. This was my favorite. Uh, it was just thick and caked up enough to be three-dimensional in most every respect, but there was still enough where it wasn't just caked on. So this was the Ultratech. I'm very, very happy with this knife. I've got a few out the front knives from Microtech. The quality off the charts. And when you're spending, you know, $300 on a, an automatic knife, it needs to be uh, of the highest grade of quality. And this most certainly is. I love this knife. And I've actually carried this one quite often. Now, when we get to the SOCOM Delta, the SOCOM series comes in the Delta or the Elite. I'm not a fan of the Elite. It just wasn't a design overall that attracted me. This one, I really, really do like. And they borrowed some elephant, uh, some elephants. Yes, they borrowed some elephants because whatever. They borrowed some elements from the whale shark, which include the titanium backspacer that you see here. Uh, and kind of the way it's shaped, how it gets goes from wider to narrower down at the base. Now, if there's one thing I don't like about the knife, it's that. Uh, it just feels like it's just going to slide right out of my hand. But anyway... This one may well be the very first SOCOM Delta Zombie Tech in the hands of a consumer right now. Because if you go search as of today, uh, which is, what is today's date? Today is February 16th. If you go search around, Blade HQ has them listed. The Hollow Grind has them listed. Uh, uh, GP Knives, I think, may have them listed. You're going to see they show out of stock, um, taking pre-orders. I just happen to be surfing around. I hit one of my favorite sites. I love the hollow grind. Quick shout out to Dave and Joel over there. And it just so happens they're local to me. So whenever I buy something from the hollow grind, Joel is cool enough to uh, drive on over to my house and drop off my new knife. So I saw these sitting up there and I had to grab it. Now, I wasn't crazy about the one that was pictured because it was like the first two thirds of the knife was just red. It wasn't splatter. It was just red. I went ahead and bought it anyway, and I sent him a note. I said, by the way, if you happen to have a couple of these, would you mind bringing them and letting me choose which one I want? He was cool enough to do that. He brought out three. 
this was my favorite. It looked like more of a like a blood spray, like a misty spray pattern. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I was able to choose that. The other ones were already sold uh, at that point by the time he drove over to my house at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So you can't find these. You can't buy these right now as of today. I'm sure very soon that you know, you'll be able to. But the other ones that had been purchased hadn't been shipped yet. So this might be the first one uh, that's sitting out here to be played with. I'm going to back this up a little bit because this is a little bit of a bigger knife. You're getting 4-inch blade. Again, I chose to get the bead blasted version this time. For whatever reason, I liked it more than the black blade. Not really sure why. I love the complex grind that's on this. You know, for the money that you're spending, again, these are about $300. I paid $260 because the hollow grind has really great prices. I see other places that are doing the pre-orders on them have them for $275, $280. That's fine. It's a couple dollars here or there. You'll pay $5 more to $10 more if you go for the black DLC coated blade. Uh, like I said, on this one, for whatever reason, I just preferred having the satin blade, or the bead blasted blade, I should say. And just like you'll see on the Ultratech, you get the, uh, the cool logo there that will state the name of the watch. It shows that it is a, so it is a Delta. It'll state the year and the number. And mine happens to be number 20 of production date 2013. So, yeah, it's kind of neat to have. So, as far as the, the overall on this knife, it's a really, really well-made knife. I love the titanium backspacer. I love how they did that. Again, I had that on my uh, Marfione Custom Whale Shark, so I kind of expected the same thing. I'm blown away with that you're getting that in a production knife. You can see inside the channel there. I, I like having an open back. I really do. I don't really like having a backspacer. So you've got a backspacer here that has openings. So I can just take a compressed air can, blow stuff out. I don't have to take the knife apart. I couldn't anyway because you've got the tri-wing screws. I don't have the uh, tool to undo that. Don't really feel the need to. You have a standard Torx, though, for your pivot. I'm going to be adjusting my pivot and loosening it up just a teeny bit. The detent on this thing is really, really super strong. So I'm hoping that kind of breaks in a little bit because it is it is kind of a bear sometimes to get it open. But it's not going to flop out open and easily. I've seen some video reviews on the standard SOCOM Deltas. One uh, YouTube person would, would just shake their knife and the, and the blade would open up. Not going to be an issue here at all. This is your titanium integrated lock bar. Uh, they've done something a little bit different here. Instead of being uh, one piece coming up off the frame, this is actually... A, uh, a separate piece built into the frame. These are aluminum frames on this particular version. And you can replace the carbonized uh, tip on here. So it's also got a built-in stop so you don't overextend. That's built into the area that's uh, replaceable on there. You know, I like the little touches that uh, Microtech does from time to time. Let me zoom this back in a little bit. I love their thumb studs. Different, it's unique, it sets them apart. One of the other nice things they've done here is they actually have a stainless steel insert into the frame of the knife. So you don't have to worry about when you're slamming this thing open, and a lot of us like to really, really flip hard when you're slamming that open, your blade stop is actually going to be your thumb studs. Instead of that slamming into a soft aluminum frame, they've built that up with stainless steel, and it actually goes all the way down and around the pivot. So it's not just a tiny little insert there is a, a nice amount of steel built up in there. Then you're gonna have this. This is gonna be your blade stop basically for the other direction. Number one, it's a standoff. And number two, when the blade is closed, it's actually gonna be making contact right there to stop the blade and seat it in the same place every single time. Uh, I do have a couple small, tiny little gripes about this, especially for the money that they charge you. Uh, the pocket clip, the retention is ridiculous. You almost can't get this into your pocket. I mean, you really have to work at it. And as you see, I'm really having to put energy into opening that up. So I'm going to have taken that off, uh, bending it a little bit and giving myself a little bit more room. The other thing is the blade is not 100% perfectly centered, which at nearly $300 you would expect it to be. And one other interesting thing, take a look at the grind as you get toward that kind of chisel tip because this is more or less uh, kind of an elongated tanto blade. Most tantos would be a little bit more truncated. This is a little bit more elongated. And one of the things that I found interesting, let me turn around this way so I don't hit my tripod, 
is the fact that the grind is not centered. So I thought that was a little bit weird, the way that this was uh, actually built. But uh, from what I understand, all of them are like that. All the production models are like that. So it must have been some kind of, uh, I don't know, I guess some kind of flaw in the mold they didn't catch, and all the knives have come out that way. One thing I noticed, I don't know if it's because it's the bead blasted blade or not, but they no longer list the steel material being used for the blade stock. I know a lot of people that bought the original SOCOM Deltas were unhappy because they went from one steel to another uh, over to 630V, uh, sorry, uh, S35VN. And I like S35VN, and that's supposed to be what this is, even though it's not marked. I've never had an issue. You know, I've got, you know, tons of Chris Reeves and, and, and other uh, very expensive knives that have S35VN. Never had a single issue with it, so I don't foresee any issues with this one. There is a new ball bearing system in the pivot, so if you're buying any version of the SOCOM Delta, be aware of that. It's going to be a very smooth operation. You know, it feels a little bit like, you know, picking up, you know, a seven, eight, nine hundred dollar custom that may have an IKBS system in there. It feels nice and glass smooth. You're going to love that feeling. Overall, I think it's a great knife. I think it's got a nice balance to it. I think it's very well built. It's comfortable in the hand. The jimping is sufficient. It's not overly sharp, but it is sufficient. Um, it's almost useless up here on the blade, though. It's very smooth, very slick. But uh, every little thing, even from the way the frame has been notched out to give you access to your thumb stud a little bit easier, everything was very well thought out on this knife. So I can definitely see myself buying other variations of the SOCOM Delta in the future. I'm keeping this one. I, the only reason I even bought this one was to match up with my other Zombie Tech. It's a cool little series. Rumor has it they might do one or two other models, maybe a whale shark or something. And when that time comes, you betcha, I'm going to lay out for that one too, just to have the, uh, the complete set. Will I grow tired of it in uh, three, four, five years? Who knows? But for right now, I think it's pretty darn cool. So if you're able to find one right now, you're probably not going to. But in, you know, in a couple of weeks, it probably won't be that big of an issue. Grab one. You're going to love it. This is one of the, uh, the nicest folders I've held for this, uh, this lower price point. So there you go. There are the zombie techs in both the Ultra Tech and in the SOCOM Delta. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Thanks.